Well, once again, good uh, afternoon. Good morning, dear colleagues. I see that all those have attended amongst the ones who were not afraid of uh, the press conference being brought forward earlier. And we'll talk today about the Gazprom in the East and our East Ward projects. This press conference is being attended by the Deputy Chairman of the Managing Board, Antonio Markelev and Alexander Medvedev, members of the board heads of the department, Vyacheslav Mikhailenko and Sergei Prozorov, head of the department, Pavel Orderov, deputy head of the departments, Alexander Kalinkin and Vasily Petlichenko, and uh, the general director of uh, Gazprom Export Company, Elena Budmistro. Today we will work for not more than one hour, so let's immediately switch over to the questions. No questions? All right, so that's it. We'll wrap up now. A uh, staff agency, please. Good morning, Alexander Ivanovich. I have a question for you. To, only to Alexander Ivanovich? No, no, certainly everybody can join if they're will, willing to. Considering the recent negotiating results with China, it was stated that specific uh, negotiations uh, were launched about time frame. To what extent can you say the contract window is uh, contracting you know, when the power of Siberia supplies may start? Well, this uh, time window was defined now. It is being narrowed. It was defined 2019-2021. Uh, now, uh, as to what it uh, can be narrowed for, and uh, once it is narrowed, you will find out. What? Uh, didn't hear? Well, you mean you haven't narrowed it yet? You just started talking about it? Yes, and Talon and Tolovich will be able to elaborate the way this window is being narrowed. Uh, good morning. The contract sets forth uh, for the start of negotiations to narrow the time window in May 2017, and so we went about this work already. So first meetings took place during Mr. Miller's <coughs> visit as part of the presidential mission to China. And so in May, we had these negotiations today with work with the CNPC company from China um, about uh, further identifying the details of such a time window narrowing. More questions, please? Anastasia Guryeva from August Media. Uh, the source of the gas supplies from the Far East to China by pipeline, what is the source? and? What volumes? And my second question was that you spoke several times about the number of gas supply sources for the third phase. Now, will the corridor be now to have uh, the source of the third phase of Sakhalin too? In terms of the gas supplies, was already defined. And in March, the feat for the third phase was not um, made. So, when? Will the new deadline be identified? Well, the feed was not supposed to be uh, decided upon. It will be next year. Now, in terms of the gas sources, we have just received a price quote from Sutherland 1, and we are going to work on it and consider it and depart from it to Sutherland fields do act as potential, I underscore, potential sources for the third phase. So everything is going according to plan. Yes, will you say something also? Yes. Um, in terms of the Far Eastern route, right? That was the question about, do I understand correctly? So in accordance with the memorandum signed by CNPC and Gazprom, uh, currently we are in negotiations about the supplies of gas from the Far East, and so the point of uh, transfer was defined, and so currently we're talking about the volumes and the timing. But what I would like to say is that uh, we've got more than 900 billion cubic meters of reserves in the city, uh, in the sea of Hotsk. So we are, I should say, considering all the fields to provide for 
the potential and future consumers of gas out of them. Are you considering your own fields or you include Sahel in one as well? I mean, if you do not agree with Sahel in one with respect to that, uh, is it going to be then through the pipeline? That's what I'm interested in. I would describe it as the Sahalin gas production hub, and I wouldn't uh, immerse myself in the specifics, trying to discuss what will happen if. I mean, we are in a normal commercial negotiating flow with the Chinese. Uh, we haven't yet defined the ultimate uh, figure, so depending upon the agreement between the parties, it will be defined later on. So everything is following its own course. But the Sahalin 1 gas, in terms of organizing shipments to gas, is something that we do not have a need for. All right, then I have another question to Vitaly Anatolievich. In order to be able to deliver 8 billion of gas to China through pipeline, what needs to be done about uh, the pipeline connection Sakhalin Habarov's can learn about stock in terms of its extension? How much would it cost? I'm sure that you have already done your calculations. Thank you. Well, I didn't say specifically what kind of volumes one could deliver to China. I mean, clearly, we ought to uh, be able to build uh, the full length of the uh, this particular pipeline connection towards China. And this is not only for the China's sake, and also, amongst other things, we have in mind our future consumers in the Far East, the Zvezda factory, the uh, fertilizer producers, and petrochemicals, and that uh, is why we're thinking about expanding our gas transportation system. So in case greater volumes are going to be flowing in the Far East, we have this capacity th through a building compressor station. Right now, we have only one compressor station built in Sahalin. It has only two units there right now. So in case there is a greater need for gas, New compressor stations are going to be built, and uh, the current compressor station will be expanded. So we're just trying to fit ourselves to consumer needs. You mean to say that uh, there will be another one built? Or, um, I guess, how many uh, for the eight? Uh, well, once again, I would like to uh, uh, say that currently we are considering the extension of the Sahalin Habar Vladivostok pipeline in its full entirety, because that would make it possible to meet the needs of the future gas uh, consumers. In case there will be additional consumers coming in, we will be changing the design of the uh, compressor station based on the needs or the capa throughput capacity of the Sahalin Habaris Vladivostok pipeline. Good afternoon. I'm NHK, representing NHK from Japan. My question is uh, to Mr. Medvedev in the first place. Now, in view of uh, the expected greater level of activity between Russia and uh, Japan um, uh, on the economic side of things, because it recently definitely had the uh, proposal by Ms. Prime Minister Abe made up of eight uh, points. Um, so it would be great to know what kind of uh, possible future cooperation you may see, what Gazprom may be interested in doing. Is there anything currently under development? Well, of course, an improvement of political environment creates the prerequisites for the development of our cooperation and this list may certainly be uh, calling for the LNG supplies from the third phase to Japan. The amount of uh, such uh, deliveries will be dependent upon the future of the nuclear generation in Japan because uh, it hasn't yet been finally uh, resolved. Also, the extent to which coal may be part of uh, the power generation in Japan is still to be decided. We will be in a position to deliver to Japan as much gas as it might require. Apart from that, uh, we have revisited the project of the pipeline gas supplies to, to Japan. The, uh, 
has been an authority issued, respective authority, to Jokmet Company, which will act as a coordinate to define the terms and conditions and the possible volumes of such deliveries to uh, Japan. So out of all possible consideration, one shouldn't rule out that such a pipeline would be worthwhile building. So it's a good potential project, and there's a good environment in place for it, and all of our counterparties are in the mood to uh, take on this project productively. Also, in terms of the cooperation with Japan, I would add, we know we have a coordination committee made up of the Agency for Natural Resources representing the Japanese government. And I would like to say that uh, on De in December last year, uh, Mr. Putin visited uh, Japan as part of that uh, trip. We were involved in that mission. And respective memoranda were signed with Mitsui and Mitsubishi companies. And as far as the localization of the manufacturing, <coughs> of equipment was concerned in the territory of Russia. So there is cooperation going on in this area as well. Uh, more questions, please. Interfax Agency. Good morning. Well, I, I don't know who might uh, answer my question. Uh, what I was trying to ask is what is the current uh, capacity uh, of uh, the uh, volumes that would be, could be diverted to the East Petrochemical Company. And why is it not possible to increase considerably the production of gas in Kamchatka? And to what extent, uh, how serious is, uh, the, is, is the consideration of the future LNG terminal construction in Kamchatka? Thank you. Uh, what was the volume of? For the petrochemical, yeah, yes, uh, the uh, capacity of uh, the <coughs> diversion in terms of the volumes that uh, can be taken away. Well, we are currently in negotiations with Rosneft in terms of the volumes involved, and based on our final deliberations, we will consider the throughput capacity for that pipeline. In the meantime, uh, we are just doing a preliminary review of that. And as far as Kamchatka is concerned, uh, right now, in Kamchatka, we are involved in exploration effort and additional exploration, uh, the South Kwakiska and Pshopska, and uh, so uh, the construction of the uh, compressor booster station. So this, uh, this is our first set of issues that we're trying to work on. And, uh, and uh, the um, regas LNG terminal, we haven't yet been considering that issue. Could you be more specific in terms of which minimum volumes and maximum volumes are being considered for that? And if you are building the compressor booster station, to what extent you are planning, uh, I mean, what kind of uh, gas volumes production you are planning to get from Kanchatka? If I may, another question to Alexander Ivanovich Medvedev. I mean, let's have first uh, Yana Tolovich on, sir. All right. Well, I think that um, INAK, I've answered the question. We're currently talking about uh, the volumes that should be involved in these shipments. I mean, there's no design documentation in place, and the ultimate needs for gas uh, haven't yet been defined as consequently. Um, it's impossible to define the capacity that we need in terms of the pipeline throughput to deliver there. I mean, there are different figures. We've re requested certain precise figures, and there is on the date in order to prepare the contract for the transportation of gas. We're currently going through these preliminary stage. Well, if I may, another question to Alexander Ivanovich. For several years, you have been talking to the Indian company Gal in order to uh, define the LNG uh, volumes uh, uh, to be supplied and the pricing issues. And when you're going to start, could you describe at this stage uh, that your negotiations are going through right now? I would ask uh, Mrs. Budmistrova to answer this question. Yes, you are absolutely correct. We are indeed in negotiations and have been for quite some time because the contract uh, had been entered into back in 2012. 
since then, the market environment changed, or the economics in it changed. There is a number of objective difficulties, and there are certain complexities in India itself in terms of building the LNG regas terminals. So this is the issue which is getting delayed somewhat. But nevertheless, Gazprom Marketing Trading, which is our subsidiary entity, continues to negotiate on a regular basis. Its representatives are visiting India, and so I hope that before the end of the current year, we will be able to arrive at a certain compromise. Yes, negotiations are being held not in order to travel to India because uh, the uh, Hindus also travel to uh, Europe on a regular basis. Ria Novosti Agency, please. Maria Gordeva from Ria Novosti. My question is about Iran. After having negotiations in uh, Vienna in, with Mr. Miller, the Minister of Oil of Iran stated that Gazprom signed the agreement on developing three fields in Iran. Could you describe the status? Is it a memorandum? Or is it a, some kind of a pre-investment? Treaty and uh, is there any time frame within which the binding documents are to be signed? Vitaly Anatolovich wants to ask that. The memoranda were signed about the possibility of Gazprom's participation in the development of the gas fields in Iran for acreages, and currently we are negotiating and doing some work to study the uh, original data which would make us understand whether Gazprom may participate in these developments. Well, it is very important for the new oil and gas contracts with Iran to come to light. We're not in a position to speak about it just yet, but a lot will depend upon it, including our level of appetite in terms of getting engaged in the development of the aforementioned fields. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you very much, Energy Intelligence. Um, further on Iran, if I may, uh, under this agreement, uh, is it expected uh, that you will be developing the field in case you are not interested in a project jointly with the Indian partners who, um, since long ago, have been negotiating about Farsat Bay? So what's the attraction in Farsat backfields, uh, the one that the Minister of Oil of Iran has been talking about for so long? To the extent I know, if I'm not mistaken, it has a lot of sulfur in its hydrocarbons. So is it of interest to Gazprom? And does Gazprom consider this upstream project in Iran as the potential resource base for the possible pipeline supplies to India? Thank you. Thank you for this question, of course. Having major companies participate in the development of such big fields can only be welcome. And Gazprom has always been working with partners. And uh, we would certainly enjoy being able to work with the Indian uh, partners in developing this Farzad Bay field. But as far as the technology for the development is concerned and uh, the fact that the hybrid companies have software in it, I should say that Gazprom has all the necessary competences to develop any sort of field that you may find in the world. So this doesn't keep us back, from it. All right, I forgot to ask because you said that there were four fields there. The Minister of Oil of Iran mentioned three, Farsad Bay, Kish, and the North Barsa. What's the fourth one? Well, you mentioned them yourself. Farzad A, Farzad B. If I may, one other question from NHK uh, channel. Uh, could you also specify uh, the construction of the third uh, no, phase? Uh, what's the situation right now? Uh, what's uh, going on with your agreements with Axon? And what you can say with reference to the sanction or effect of the Sahalin projects? Is there any well, work with respect to the third uh, train is underway? No feed is being prepared on the basis of which the final investment decision may be made. The time frame for it, as I said, is going to be next year, 2018. But in as far as sanctions are concerned and their effect, despite the fact that there is no smell of any deep oil, the potential 
for the oil cap to be developed really extends uh, far out into the future throughout the next decade. But nevertheless, the United States of America, apparently to support the competitiveness of its LNG projects, have imposed these sanctions. Well, all right. I would say that we would be in a position to develop these projects even under sanctions. And, uh, that is what we're doing already, and uh, the whole world and experience shows that counter sections are counterproductive, particularly if they are against Russia. What was that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Axon is a commercial operator of Sakhalin 1 project. And we, as I put it, have already received the price quote from Sakhalin 1, and that came not from Axon, but from the consortium of parties who are in this uh, PSA Sakhalin 1 project. We are currently analyzing it, and so we hope that the results of our analysis will uh, allow us to continue negotiations. Additional questions, please, yes. Dialogue, newspaper. Is there any activity that Gazprom is currently pursuing in the Arctic uh, East uh, area and the shelf. And uh, is it involved in any way in the Northern Sea route in organizing transportation? Because as far as I understand, uh, Gazprom has some acreages there, doesn't it? Thank you. Well, I would like to say that and as far as the United Engine Building Company we recently have signed documentation with regards to the development of the Northern Sea Route because Gazprom has technologies to support the transshipment of vessels with the help of the space-based technology because Gazprom has um, implemented uh, the oversight system, SMOTR, that's the brand name of that system, which monitors the icing conditions in the Northern Seas and uh, provides uh, the uh, intra communication with all of the facilities that are located uh, uh, under Gazprom's name in the Arctic Circle. So we have uh, signed an agreement uh, with the Russian Aerospace Agency on SMOTR oversight uh, system and the monitoring. As far as the anchorage are concerned, we do have licenses in the Arctic. We are currently um, are performing exploration there. So everything is according to plan, and we are trying to prepare ourselves for the Arctic. More questions, please. Vedemosti newspaper. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, I'm awfully uh, sorry uh, for the fact that I was five minutes late, so just in case somebody already asked that question. Uh, recently, Uthar uh, stated that non-discriminatory access rights should also be covering the power of Siberia. So what is Gazprom's uh, attitude towards that? And uh, what, what's, the currently, uh, what's the current phase of the construction? Well, dear colleagues, I'm already tired of continuously answering these questions. We have uh, a law in place about the export of pipeline gas, and this is the issue which is being propagated and perpetuated by uh, Rosneft uh, uh, in the East and in the Western Europe. We don't see any reasons for the law to be changed, not only from the point of view of Gazprom's economic interests, but in the first place, from the point of view of the economic interests of the Russian Federation. This law was specifically enacted in order to ensure Russia's economic interests. We did not object to this law being amended and as far as the LNG is concerned. And so the first results of such legal amendments we do see in the Yamal LNG project were acting as the uh, off-takers of uh, some part of the volumes up to 2.5 million tons. That is the possibility that we can have. So you shouldn't confuse LNG with the pipeline gas. We were able to prove as to the reason why one shouldn't do so, and we are confident that nothing will be changed here. 
And the question was, uh, what's the current uh, phase of the pipeline construction? I mean, the power severe. Uh, was the question about the phase of the construction of the pipeline? Uh, uh, the percentage of uh, completion. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me tell you that uh, the construction of the pipeline is uh, ahead of schedule. We built already 774. 774, right? Yeah. Yeah, 774, I'm sorry. Kilometers of uh, the trunk uh, section of the pipeline. So this year we were planning to be at 660, so we were able to overdo the plan because winter was warm and it was possible to continue working actively, and so our contractors are able to um, speed up. Um, so this year we're planning to uh, lay down and build more than 1,100 kilometers. Yes, please. Dialogue newspaper, could you please specify the gas from Yamal is going to be following the eastward route? Yamal gas, eastward or westward? What will be its destination to be transported? I mean, Yamal has the resource base. It is located I mean, the fields of the Yamal Peninsula are intended to um, be shipped not um, eastward, but to the west. You mean from Yamal LNG? Yeah. Oh, Yamal LNG. Oh, okay, okay, yes. Uh, where th the LNG gas will go from Yamal LNG. Well, if we are talking about the Yamal LNG project, the uh, shipments in the first place are intended to be towards India, but this could be different swap operations that we're currently working on. Yeah. Yeah, westward. Yeah, the western route as well. But please, mind you, this. Yeah, I mean the Northern Sea Route. Is it what you're after? I mean, the success which was achieved presupposes that in case it's necessary and using the modern day gas tankers, one could ship gas both westward and eastward. I got a question about the South Lunskaya field, uh, could you please tell us, uh, have you already done analysis about how much gas can be produced from the cost of the reserve? Uh, I know it, uh, to the extent uh, uh, many are there. And so how much one may produce a year and how long will plateau production continue? And is it possible to develop this field with the help of the uh, underwater infrastructure that belongs to Sahelin too? And generally speaking, wouldn't it be easier to develop the South Lunskoye than, let's say, compared to Kirinskoye, because Kirinskoye is further away from uh, the shore, and you don't have to build underwater facilities, but maybe you can do something with the help of a platform and just do without these Western sanctions? That's my question. <coughs> oh, thank you very much. We will definitely take into account your ideas when uh, uh, preparing the uh, design for the development of uh, this uh, field, because you've described such technologies, uh, we definitely are very keen to uh, learn more about them. But on a serious note, the fact that we were able to discover that field we haven't yet went about working on its design, because this is a separate structure, which currently we consider as the general part of the Sapphalin 3. Yeah, yeah, but uh, about the production, I mean, considerable, considerable reserves, 47 billion. Yeah, the reserves is one thing, but production is a different matter. I mean, I understand they are related. Well, all right, you know, today we are 
working uh, on uh, ramping up the South Kirinska uh, in Kirinska you know, to uh, uh, its full design capacity. So, 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 no assessment has been done yet. Do you mean to say? No, 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 because we, we, we're having our hands uh, you know, full with uh, Kirinsko field in the first place. So. Toss agency? If I may, I would like to go back to the issue of uh, the gas supplies to China. Could you approximately uh, give us to understand what will be the timing for the signing of the contract for the shipments uh, through the western route and uh, what situation with engagements about the supplies to China from the Far East? Thank you. Well, colleagues, if you analyze the the story about the way the Western Route contract was signed, you will understand that a very simple rule should be applied. As soon as it happens, then imminently we do something, because the Sahalin and the other projects and we're negotiating. You know, the reason as to why we're not so fast you know, moving forward, because the Chinese counterparty has to decide on what exactly it requires, because if we are to analyze the demand potential, it is enormous. So 500 billion uh, as a consumption level in China is really not something implausible. But in terms of when the key decisions are to be made, these are the questions that you have to present to the Chinese party, uh, including the ones about the place for coal and environmental protection. Now, the amount of money that is being spent to uh, treat the uh, lung diseases is something that you may see in the reports by the World Health Organization. These are tens of billions of US dollars a year. But these are the decisions that should be made by China. We are in a position to supply as much gas as the People's Republic of China may need. Reuters, please. Good morning. Uh, could you please uh, say are there any negotiations currently underway with Asian investors, including from China and Japan, about their involvement in the Sahalin project? Because previously you said that uh, possibly they may be involved in the construction of the third LNG terminal or the Amur uh, LNG plant. Uh, could you describe the stage at which these negotiations are currently on? And are you talking to the Japanese banks about them participating in the financing of any projects at all? Thank you. As far as the third phase is concerned, it will be worked on as part of the Sakhalin Energy Company. The doors are open there for the Japanese companies to participate in this project as well. But with respect to other points, Vitaly Anatolovich will uh, comment on that. Well, the Chinese companies are actively participating. I mean, the Chinese Pipeline Bureau is uh, building the underwater passage uh, under the Amur River, which is the part of the power of Siberia extension, because we recently have uh, launched that underwater fording uh, section. As far as the Amur gas processing uh, plant is concerned, the Chinese companies, you might know, are similarly involved in negotiations in, uh, in uh, licensing, and uh, similarly, uh, a subsidiary Chinese uh, company, SBCC, won uh, the tender uh, for the construction of the non-licensed part of the uh, installation. So we have signed the contract with this company. Of course, the participation of the Chinese company calls for um, financing being made available uh, by the Chinese banks, which uh, I would say are in uh, the group of uh, lenders who are considering the possibility of a joint project with respect to the Amur uh, plant. Interfax agency, please. Um, another question that I have about power of Siberia, because recently there was a meeting with the pipe uh, manufacturers. Uh, the uh, issue was to uh, 
accelerate the uh, manufacturing of uh, piping. Are you considering um, in any way to uh, also accelerate uh, the power of Siberia construction? And I'm sorry, uh, Lena Viktorovna was uh, interrupted. You were trying to say about swapping operations. So what kind of markets in terms of the end users you may consider as part of uh, your overall swapping arrangements? Mm. Well, yes, indeed. We uh, have had a meeting with our, our steel producers, with the pipeline manufacturers, at which we discussed the cooperation with respect to our pipeline project and the possibility of uh, the, the Russian producers participating in the supplies of uh, components and equipment and uh, the piping for our new projects, including the part of Siberia. Now, in terms of the accelerating, um, the supplies and uh, expediting the power of Siberia construction, like I told you already, we already had of our schedule in the construction of the power of Siberia. We were planning to do 660 kilometers this year, but uh, we will end up uh, building more than that. And so we'll adjust our plans for the next year. Currently, we uh, would plan for 660 for next year, but we will reconsider what we might be able to do uh, for next year towards the end of the year. Right now, we cannot uh, be more specific unless we finish the year. Um, you know, so it's difficult for us to be precise about 2018. I will answer the second question. Uh, we are talking about the volumes of up to 2.5 million tons of LNG. These volume may be placed into the Indian market, like I said, but similarly, Swapping operations may uh, be applied to the European market through the port of Brugge. You should also know that 12 months ago we signed an agreement with Shell on strategic cooperation. So we are currently starting all different swapping options because the LNG market is becoming, it hasn't yet become a global one, but it is already becoming almost such. And so arbitration should definitely be considered as part of the overall uh, market price. So this will be part of uh, our portfolio, I mean, from Gazprom marketing and trading, as well as the Asia-Pacific region. Please. Uh, hello, Yamal. Harold, um, could you please tell us uh, how the Tambay fields are being developed and where the gas from these fields are going to be exported? Um, uh, what are the volumes which will be coming out of it? Uh, Sorry, um, this is really not the question um, applicable to the subject matter of today's conference. Uh, yes, um, thank you. Uh, my first question is about Japan. You said that uh, Jokmak is currently analyzing the possibility of building a pipeline in Gazprom, believes and doesn't rules out the possibility that it could be economically viable. To the extent I remember, the Gazprom previously didn't see the economic viability in supplying gas by pipelines to Japan. It saw rather environmental risks. So if currently you do not rule out the economic viability of such an endeavor, so what is the reason as to why your view on that uh, changed uh, while the environmental risks, as far as I can see, do remain? If I'm wrong, please correct me. Yes, and uh, Gazprom currently is participating in this review, in this uh, impact assessment, or John Mack is doing it itself. If uh, positive, then when Gazprom may become part of this effort? And my second question, if I may, was about India. Alexander Ivanovich, the day before yesterday, already said a few words about the potential pipeline from uh, Russia to India or from Iran, but he promised that he would uh, divulge you know, details today. So what's most economic, uh, I mean, attractive route uh, in terms of economics? Uh, and uh, is it from Iran? And what the cost will be? And not Jokmek itself, because we simply have agreed with Jokmek the way we are going to look into this. And as far as risks are concerned, they certainly haven't disappeared, which is specifically the task for the Japanese side to decide the way we are going to operate 
together with the fisheries and the, take into account the fishery areas. So that's what we have coordinated with JOPEC. As far as India is concerned, so far the shipment options have been narrowed, but it doesn't mean that the best possible option has been arrived at. This is something that still remains to be worked on. During the previous St. Petersburg Forum, a memorandum was signed about the possibility of uh, supplying gas to India. And uh, together with the Indian engineering company, we were looking at all possible options whereby the gas could be delivered to India. And we have presented the government of India with these optionalities, which are currently being reviewed. Yes, please. Dialogue newspaper about the future shipments of gas to China is my question. Somehow, gas started developing gas hydrates. Don't Gazprom, doesn't Gazprom find it a bit scary? No, we don't. And the Japanese companies have also announced the possibility to develop hydrates. It's a costly technology, so I do not think that in the current price environment this particular production technology will be broadly applied. Um, any more questions, please? Interfax, yes. I have another question uh, about the way the uh, The way you are going to decide where to store gas in the Far East, you also in your press release has stated that you have in Yamal energy up to 9.2 million tons of uh, what you may take off. But you are saying that it's 2.5. Could be more specific. It's 2.5 with the possibility, to, it's 2 million with the possibility to increase the offtake one to 2.5 million. But in the press release it says uh, 2.9, and in the press release it was also 2.9. Well, I would say that the press release is not lying because there is a possibility to grow that amount if the parties uh, do not obstruct each other, as we remember being written one of the famous Soviet stories. Yeah, as far as the shipment of gas to the power of Siberia, additional supplies of gas to the power of Siberia, you mean? I mean, we are currently looking for possible caverns which may be utilized to uh, organize the underground gas storage along the Paris Siberia pipeline road. And I should tell you that we signed contracts with CNPC about the possibility of Gazprom's participation in uh, the underground storage projects uh, in the territory of uh, China, specifically along the Paris Siberia route, but over on the Chinese territory in this case. Vedemosti? But I would like to go back to Sakhalin too. At a certain point in time, uh, we heard that uh, tax exemptions might be requested for that project. I wanted to ask what kind of tax exemptions are being discussed right now and, and are they being discussed right now by the government? We saw that in a number of projects, certain Exemptions were granted with respect to the infrastructure, but before we speak about the exemptions for the third phase, we need to complete the work that we're currently involved in in preparing the feed and then make up our mind in whether we might need exemptions or not uh, and as far as the port facilities are concerned. So before getting an exemption, you have to understand whether you need it. Colleagues, we have 10 minutes left. Uh, will there be any more questions, please? Three, two, one. No questions. All right. Thanks, everyone. No, no, there is one over there. All right. Yes, uh, last question. Yes, if I may. Thank you. Uh, um, I mean, 
it's about the cooperation with the Japanese companies, but also about the Baltic LNG because at the St. Petersburg Forum, uh, there was a meeting between Gazprom and the Torchu in, and especially as Gazprom stated that Torchu is interested in participating in the Baltic LNG project. So uh, I wanted to ask you, are they interested to participate as uh, on the equity side as shareholders or as uh, off-takers of LNG? It would be rational to uh, expect that if they're interested in the Baltic LNG, they may also be interested in the third phase of Sutton too. Could you please explain? Thank you. With respect to the third phase, I would like to say that this project will be done as part of the Sakhalin energy. So, no possibility of new partners entering into it is not being considered. Now, with respect to the interest demonstrated by our Japanese counterparts, including, amongst others, by a torture company, that extends towards not only an acquisition of gas, but also towards its participation as an investor. We do have such a reserve in the Baltic LNG. Now, who will be chosen ultimately and upon which terms and conditions? This is something that you will soon learn about. All right, thank you very much. Our next press conference is going to be on June 22nd, and it will be about the financial performance by